so today uh, we wanted to discuss um, disorders of sexual development. Uh, there's been an evolution of terminology as regards uh, disorders of sexual development and uh, maybe we start there. Uh, there's been words like uh, hermaphrodite uh, used for these conditions. There's been words like intersex used uh, for these conditions. Uh, but um, currently most people use disorders of um, a sexual development. Uh, we are trying to, I think, move away from calling them disorders to calling them uh, differences. Uh, I think one of the reasons um, that is there is that when we say disorders, we create panic. We, we think that they have to be corrected now, that we have to do something now. So um, I think it's safer uh, to say uh, differences of um, uh, sexual development because it removes that uh, connotation of something has to be done now, uh, something has to be corrected. Of course, that's not saying that nothing needs to be corrected. Sometimes something needs to be corrected. But really changing this terminology to differences uh, makes all of us relax and do a proper evaluation and give the situation time uh, before we can decide to, uh, to be impulsive and try and uh, correct something. Um, so when a baby is born, um, in the African setup, we lift up the baby, uh, show the genitals of the baby to the mother and tell her to decide um, or uh, make a decision on what she thinks the baby is. Is the baby male? Is the baby female? Once the mother decides the sex of her baby, uh, everyone is happy, the midwives uh, write the sex of the baby in the in the file uh, without really um, much thought, um, and this might have uh, implications. Um, in the department of obstetrics and gynecology as well, uh, we see how we say we take care of females. Um, and when a medical student says um, this is a 25-year-old uh, female, uh, some people even say, do we ever take care of males here? Um, yeah, I think that um, their medical students should say female uh, because it's possible to have a male or female in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, depending on what you think female and male is, and so on. So uh, things are not that obvious. But anyway, um, the baby is born, and uh, the midwife says male, or the mother says male, and it's written in the file, everyone is happy, everyone goes home. Uh, the mother buys pink or blue clothes, and so on and so forth. Uh, but... Um, 16 years later, um, it might not be so obvious. Uh, we remember the story of this athlete. Um, after her success uh, in athletics, people started questioning, is she male? Is she female? She's always been male. She's always been female. But people started asking, is she male, really? Is she female? Um, the stories from her that she was even forced to take some drugs uh, to lower her testosterone levels if she had to uh, compete uh, in, the, in, the, in those athletic, in the athletics. So that's how things can change. That's how an obvious uh, things can be. It's just an emphasis on how you can't force a sex on someone at birth. 
um, things uh, might look different uh, later and so on. So there's ways of uh, describing what sex uh, somebody uh, belongs to. Um, it's not just showing the genitals. So we'll talk about the different ways of determining uh, what sex somebody belongs to. So this is not commonly um, highlighted, but I think that it's important as, as a type of phenotypic sex, the general outlook of, um, of a person. So usually when a person walks towards you, whether you are at a football match, you're in a nightclub, um, you have this general impression that this is a girl walking towards me and this is a man uh, walking towards me and so on. So there is that um, type of uh, categorization of sex of, um, of a human being. Then um, there's another type of uh, phenotypic sex. So you look at the external uh, genital organs of a human. So they are dressed in front of you. What do you see? Do you see a penis? Do you see um, a clitoris? Do you see a labia majoras? Do you see labia minoras? Yeah, so if you see a penis, you say, oh, it's it's a male. When you see a labia, as you see a clitoris, oh, you say, oh, no, this is a female. That's um, a type of uh, categorization under phenotypic sex as well. Then we all know that we have internal organs as well that um, help us categorize um whether somebody is female or male. So if they have fallopian tubes, they have a uterus, um, yeah, they have a cervix, you say, oh, this is, this must be a female because they have all these uh, gadgets. Um, on the male side, you see vas deferens, you see seminal vesicles, um, you see um, ejaculatory ducts, you categorize that um, person as male looking at those um, uh, internal organs. So this is a phenotypic sex as well because it's what you are seeing, but these are inside um, organs. Then you have what is called uh, gonadal sex. Gonadal sex is um, you looking at whether this person has testis or ovaries of course if somebody has ovaries we rush into saying this is a female if somebody has testis we rush into saying um this is a male then we have another way of um categorizing sex which is called the genetic sex so we generally say if somebody is XX, they are female. And if somebody is XY, they are male. So that's, that's another way we use to um, categorize the sex of somebody. And that is called their genetic um, sex. Then... I think this is the last one. Uh, this is called brain sex. So brain sex is really um, controversial and difficult to define. But for the purposes of our presentation, brain sex means um, what do you think you are in the inside? How do you feel? Do you feel like you are male? Do you feel like you are female? Um... Or do you feel none of them? You just feel human. You don't feel female or male. And um, all these things really, how you feel in the inside, how your brain categorizes you, um, is also part of the development. You know, when the uh, 
embryo is developing around six eight weeks there there are all these hormones that start being produced your um, testosterone um, uh, your beta hcg um, maybe some anti-mullerian hormones all these hormones have the effect on brain development and might have the effect of how you feel or where you think you belong female male or, or none of the above so all that might be part of um of the brain uh, development of an embryo so we've described different kinds of sex that somebody can have so we talked about your genetic sex we've talked about your phenotypic sex we've talked about uh, gonado sex and and so on so again i go back to the example of somebody walking towards you sometimes you just say female when that person is not female or sometimes you say male when that person is not actually male so even our phenotypic general outlook might be different from what we really are it's not so obvious sometimes to tell when somebody's walking towards you is that a male is that a female and so on so we the message is that we just need to slow down a little bit You know, typically, again, sometimes it might be difficult to tell um, what you are looking at. Are you looking at a penis? Are you looking at a clitoris? Are you looking at labia? Are you looking at scrotum? It might not be so obvious. And again, the message is just to slow down a little bit and have a proper evaluation and have a proper communication and then um, maybe eventually decide what is what. Gonado sex is the same as well. Sometimes um, a person might have an ovary on the left, a testis on the right, or a testis on the right, an ovary on the left, they might have a dysfunctional testis and a functional ovary or a functional testis and a dysfunctional ovary. Um, they might have a combination uh, like uh, the slide shows there. They might have a combination of an ovary and a testis. So all these things. So which one is it? Are you male or, or female based on ovary or testis? Then even the genetic um, outlook can also be confusing. It's not that um, straightforward. So we might have an XX, which we call female. We might have an XY that we call male. But we might have an XX um, with a penis. We might have an XX with a vagina. And a uterus. But we might also have an XY with a vagina and a uterus. And also extending that further. When you have XXX, are you really female? Because the XX is the female we know. But when you have three Xs, are you female? When you have X and X and a Y, are you female or are you male? When you have XO, you don't have another X, so are you female? And you might have um other individuals um where you do a karyotype and there's a combination of xys and xx's so are these individuals female or male so so we see that um everything develops at differently with uh certain differences so gonads can develop uh, differently um, somebody can develop uh, phenotypically different 
um, somebody can have a genetic sex that is confusing and uh, brain sex is no uh, different um, somebody can really feel and think that they are really really on the male side uh, somebody can uh, really uh, feel and think that they're really really on the uh, female side but having said that um, depending on how the development of the brain took place uh, embryologically under the different influences of different hormones that critical time six to eight weeks um, an individual themselves might find it difficult to say exactly how they feel inside. Do they feel male? Or do they feel female? Or do they feel anything in between? Um, or is it, do they feel nothing? They just feel uh, human. They just feel um, normal. So that that is also uh, possible. So, um, in summary, it looks like it's not that easy from labor ward at birth to tell who's female, who's male. And even as adults, it might be difficult um, to tell who's male and who's, who's female. We should not be in a hurry. We should evaluate. We should uh, take time and um, make conclusions depending on a proper evaluation. Maybe birth is not the correct time to assign um, sex uh, to an individual. So next time we discuss um, how these um, disorders might happen, the genes, uh, the hormones, and how we get to having these different um, uh, disorders of um, sexual development or differences of sexual development. Thank you for listening and see you in the next one.